Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Deck Studios and welcome to the test bench. Today I'm going to be trying contrast paints over metals. I'm going to be starting with some Citadel Iron Breaker as my base coat and then I'll be using a Silicanum Grey over top of it. So I'm going to begin by just base coating a few details on this orc using Iron Breaker. Now back here where it's a little bit sloppy with the orc flesh, there's a little bit on the power claw. And it might make this just a little challenging to get good coverage. Because I have also slightly pre-thinned my iron breaker. When I was transferring them to the dropper bottles, I did add a little bit of flow aid. And that does, you know, help with the flow, but it obviously makes the layers a little bit thinner. So sometimes it can be a little more difficult to get coverage over a darker color with pre-thinned metallics. And we're not doing a detailed paint job here. The whole point is just to see how fast we can move contrast. Right, that looks like it's fully base coated. Let's just check for any spots we might have missed. Our spots are a little bit weak. Let's get that little switch on the back of the elbow. She never realized there was an on-off switch back here. That's kind of funny. And let's get the little spiky plates on the toes as well. You can see that Iron Breaker covers really nicely over the Wraithbone base coat. I suppose his jaw is metallic, because why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't you have a big robot jaw? I see a hair stuck in there. There's two things primer is great at finding. It's mold lines and cat hair. All right, and last, let's get the, uh, I'm not gonna do the entire slugger, but I'm gonna do a couple parts of it. We'll maybe leave the main body to be black instead, and we'll just do the, uh, ammo barrel here. I'm also thinking I don't need to have perfect base coats with the contrast because it's just the way it covers. It's not going to matter if a little bit of it's not metallic underneath it, but I'm not sure. 
but maybe there's some value in just testing sloppy base coats while I'm at this. All right, there's our metallics down. So for contrast, I'm gonna try Basilicanum Gray on the Power Claw. Give it a good shake. So far I'm liking that. Of course it'll look different when it dries, so can't really pass judgment yet. Well, I am really liking the look of the Basilicanum Gray over the Metallics. And can't forget the little switch at the back of his power claw. It's very important. Otherwise, how do you turn it on? And here I'm just going to run the Basilicanum Gray just up onto the Orc Flesh a little bit so we get some kind of shading between the two areas. And now we wait. Right at this point, the Basilicanum Gray is about half dry. It's still kind of pooling in a few areas, but I think it's dry enough that I can start moving on with some of the stuff that's not adjacent, so like the Orc Flesh, for example. So I'm gonna start hammering that out next. Let's give it a good little shake. So right now I'm just painting his whole face with the green, even though you know I want the eyes and the teeth to be picked out. And he does have a little nose ring as well, I've just noticed. So you could be more careful and deliberate, but I also find the contrast paints give you the best drying effect if they're kind of go on, not thickly per se, but they have to go on quickly. You kind of can't dally with them. When you stop to kind of work around small details, that tends to be where you get weird coffee staining effects. Because if you put in, you know, a thicker coat and let it all dry simultaneously, that's when the, you know, sort of contrast effect seems to be the most pronounced. All right, there's his head. There's a little bit of this arm right here. And let's try not to mess everything else up. So there's actually a little bit of like a leather strap there, but on the inside of his arm, I'm just not sure I care that much. In fact, I'm just gonna kind of get this in there. And 
And we got the other arm to go. So contrast paints really play well into batch painting because you have a lot of waiting for things to dry and that's really not an efficient use of your time when you're painting a single miniature. But if I'm doing 10 of these orcs, then that time's kind of irrelevant because usually it'll be dry by the time the you know, 10th or 20th or let's be honest, they're orcs. The 90th one is done. Okay, I think that's all of our exposed flesh. I forgot the underside of his chin is actually not metallic, but is just exposed flesh. So let's just hit that really quickly. Okay, and again, we're playing the waiting game. All right, at this point, most of the orc flesh is dry. It's still kind of wet in the pools, but I think we can start to apply some snake bite leather here safely. So here we go. Gonna use this for his pants as well. So now you can really see that nice contrast effect pop. You know, you're getting the deep shade and the pretty bright highlight there almost instantly. Remember, you want to make sure it goes on thick so it can kind of spread out on its own. If you put it on too thin, that's when you start to get the... Too thin or too slow is when it kind of starts to do that coffee stain look. And you want to just move the pools of it around on your own. You can even use a second brush for that. But you have to do it while it's still kind of in that wet stage. So I've just got a paper towel off camera that I'm just occasionally blotting this away with. Like that drop there is too big. I'm less concerned about like you know the back of the pants. So I'm gonna do this shoulder in it as well. It's a very big smooth surface and they may actually look weird. Smoother surfaces are basically the hardest thing to contrast properly. All right, that's the next color down. Next up, I'm gonna use some Wildwood. I'm gonna use that for his belt and I think his boots. And I'm gonna use that adjacent to the snake bite because I don't really care if they kind of run together. And 
and there where there's a little bit of the basilicanum gray and the metallics on the boot, I'm just going to use the wildwood over it because the wildwood's a pretty potent color. What I'm sort of discovering is contrast works really well if you kind of just work from your lightest shade to your darkest shade because a lot of the darker shades will cover up the lighter shades really easily, but it doesn't work the other way at all. Like no amount of snakebite leather will ever cover up wildwood. It might tint it, but it'll never cover it. But it works really well in the other direction. I'm just trying to make sure here. I know I say not to be too slow and deliberate, but I'm trying not to go over the metallic areas. So I'm a little bit less concerned about accidentally going over a little bit of the snake bite because it's a brown adjacent to a brown. You know, a little back and forth mixing there won't matter much, but we don't want to mess up the metallics. Okay, and there we go. Getting there. And I'm going to just do the same here for, say, these leather straps on his back here. So up under the chin here, no one's really going to see that, especially on just a tabletop ready model. So we can just be a little bit sloppy and layer our colors and not worry too much about it. I'm just going to get that little hook. I'm just going to get those little D-rings with this color, even though it doesn't make sense for them to be leather. It's just easy to do right now. There we go. Oh, we got the little... little tiny leather belt holding the power claw in place. Again, I'm just going to do the hardware in brown as well. We already kind of did it on the inside of the arm. So let's just... quick little tint. All right, there we go. So now it's drying time. We've got a couple colors layered right now. You know, we've got a couple of wet colors active at the moment, so I think it's time to just kind of sit back and let those dry. Okay, as before, the Wildwood's about half dry now, so I should be safe to start moving on. There's some areas here I'm going to basically be bringing in Black Templar next, and this is where working from your lighter colors to your darker colors kind of works out because right in here, I'm gonna just kind of just slop Black Templar all over this, and more or less the whole shirt. Basically everything that's left at this point. And it's possible some of this brown will run, also some of the brown is just on areas that I want to be black. But because black is obviously darker than brown, it's not gonna really matter too much visually, especially because we are doing just, you know, a quickie tabletop kind of paint job. You can see right away, the fact there was a little bit of brown showing there didn't really have any impact. Now there are a few little details left on the power claw that I didn't touch. I'm probably going to hit them with the same red I used for the eyes when I get there.
here you can see little bits of both orc flesh and snake bite leather up on that you know I'll call it a collar it's not really a collar but that bit of the shirt and the black templar just pretty much didn't care just basically obliterated it and so that's sort of the the color layering really kind of matters with contrast paint because you can sort of use the fact that a darker color will just you know knock out a lighter color to your favor get that little bullet just sitting there and I just tried to fix a coffee stain it was already a little bit too late you can see it started to sort of streak a bit Okay, there we go. What I'm gonna do next is just very quickly get a little bit of base coat color back on his eyes. So I'm grabbing the Citadel Wraithbone. Now I have thinned my Wraithbone down a little bit because I mostly use it through airbrush. So this might take me an extra coat or two. I'm hoping to pick up a second pot very soon so I can have one thinned pot and one regular pot. And this sort of seems the best way to deal with small details and contrast is just ignore them in the first pass and pick them out later. I'm actually going to hit his nose ring and his earrings as well. Just lighten those back up. So while I've got the Wraithbone primer handy here, I'm going to just quickly put a new base coat on his fingernails here. And if I can reach them, his teeth. Now, of course, with this model, I don't have to worry about his other hand because it's been replaced with a power claw. So yeah, his teeth are a little challenging because of that metal jaw he's got. So we're going to try and come in from this side here. I don't need to get all of them. I just want to pick out sort of like the canines here, the biggest couple prominent teeth. Right, now I'm gonna wait for all that to dry before I move on to the and in yellow. So now finally everything's dry and in yellow is gonna go on his earrings. His little nose ring. Then we're gonna to switch to skeleton horde for his claws and teeth. Now with his mouth here, I'm just basically going to just get a pile of this in and hope for the best. There we go. And finally, just a little bit of Blood Angel's Red for his eyes and the little leftover mechanical parts on the Power Claw.
Now, I don't want the eyes to be too dark, so I'm actually slowly pulling a little bit of the contrast paint back out again. There we go. And just hit these little hoses up. So the Flesh Terrors Red is one of the more translucent colors. It's kind of, you know, a bit more of like a stained glass kind of feel to it. You can see, like, for example, there's a little bit of orc flesh there on the hose. And you can certainly see it through the red, but it's just become like a black dot now. You know, it's, it's no longer green. And, you know, on a hose like this, on a piece of orc equipment, a little black dot just kind of ends up looking like an oil stain or something. So it's one of those things where you don't have to fix it because it doesn't really cause a problem. Right, and there's our fully contrasted snake bite orc knob with a power claw. Also, my first real test of using a contrast color over a metallic, and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. It's got a lot of the old sort of bolt gun plus black ink vibe to it, and I really like that. Hey, if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new videos. You can also join me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios, on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evenings at 8.30 p.m. Eastern for live painting and sculpting shows. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps cover the cost of paint, models, and all my video production gear, but more importantly, it helps keep food in my kid's belly and a roof over his head. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers, both past and present. Your ongoing support and encouragement is really what makes this possible. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.